بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is Professor Muhammad Hijazi Our talk today is about the slip capital femoral epiphysis Our learning outcome are the epidemiology and risk factors and classification Assessment of implant stability, planning and management algorithm, fixation and revision implants Our slippage is disturbance between the femur and the femoral epiphysis in uh, uh, in more than one uh, plane i mean uh, in one plane but it's oblique to the normal planes we know the condition uh, of the proximal physis uh, that leads to slippage of the metaphysis related to the epiphysis the epiphysis stays in the stabulum as it is and the metaphysis starts changing its position related to the femoral head that's why it's it's a misnomer, the slipped capital femoral epiphysis or the Sufi. Uh, the incidence, <coughs> it's most uh, common disorder in adolescent hips. And, uh, and the most common age is 12 to 14 years, and it's about in 10 per 1,000. It's more common in the obese, uh, the males, and in the uh, rapid gross spurt part of their life. Uh, uh, the left hip is more common and it's bilateral in uh, 17 to 50 percent. Uh, our risk factors, we have the obesity. It's a very great risk factor, especially in our country. Uh, the stabular and femoral uh, retroversion and the radiation therapy. Several conditions can lead to this slip in early age, like hypothyroidism and the renal osteodystrophy, gross hormone treatment, Pan hypocotitrism, Down syndrome. Some authors now raise to uh, raise the possibility of the uh, it's a type of vitamin D deficiency because in most of the cases it was the measurement of vitamin D yielded deficiency, severe deficiency in these children, especially that they are obese. But they need more quantities of the vitamin D. The uh, mechanical forces acting on the susceptible physis, which is uh, increased in length during the gross spurt, uh, and we have uh, the hypertrophic zone, which increase, is increased in this part of this time of the uh, gross uh, of the child. Uh, <clears throat> this cartilage is the weak point where the, tra uh, during transmission of forces, the sleep will occur. Uh, the metaphysis uh, started uh, to translate anteriorly and externally uh, rotates. Uh, Epiphysis stays in the stabulum and lies posterior to the metaphysis. Uh, it is similar to uh, Salter Hairs type 1. We have several classifications. Uh, we have the uh, radio, uh, radiographic classification. It's uh, mild and moderate and severe according to the angle from 0 to 30, 30 to 50, and more than. Uh, 60 to 90. This is the type 3. Uh, the clinical one, you have a stable patient coming weight bearing. This is a stable type. Patient cannot weight bear. This is the unstable type. And you have an acute form and a chronic form, an acute and chronic form. Uh, the onset of symptoms in the acute form is uh, less than three weeks, and the patient's unable to weight bear. A chronic, this is gradual onset of symptoms, more than three weeks and able to weight bear, but still a little bit painful. Uh, acute and chronic, acute displacement of a chronic slipped capital femoral epiphysis with a long history of pain and uh, uh, foot experimentation. And the uh, stable uh, patient can weight bear with crutches uh, and have minimal risk uh, of osteonecrosis and they have a good prognosis. Here, uh, I need to illustrate that there is another type of slip, which is not the type we are speaking about. This is the traumatic slip. The traumatic slip is like a fracture of a neck fin. It is not a gradual process uh, uh, in a hypertrophied uh, epiphysis with normal loads, but this is a traumatic uh, uh, slip. In, in this traumatic slip, you, uh, the, the, it's like a fracture of a neck femur, but through the physis. This type has osteonecrosis up to 100%. Uh, the classification based on duration of slip. We have a phase I need to explain about is the pre-slip. In this phase, 
there is widening of the epipsis and it's diagnosed best with MRI and, and the acute and uh, acute and chronic and the chronic as we uh, discussed before and late it's uh, uh, where you find sclerosis, EVN or osteoarthritis and this is long standing time. The southward angle is used for classification. If you look in the figure to the left, you need a, a line joining the ends of the physis both ends, and you drop a perpendicular to that. Another line is uh, 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 is uh, collinear with the shaft in the middle of the shaft. These two lines meet and uh, uh, and subtend an angle of 12 uh, degree normally. But uh, on the slip side, on your right side, uh, you will find uh, that this line is, uh, these two lines angle, they subtend an angle of 40 degrees. Then you subtract 40 from 12 and you get 28 degrees. This is a, a demonstration of the example. Uh, 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 the uh, grade one, it's a mild epithelial uh, displacement, less than 30, from 30 to 60, and more than 60. And uh, our, we have growing pain, of course, uh, as a presentation. And we have knee pain, of course, as another presentation. And uh, it may mislead you for long periods of time because you start doing a, a knee x ray and you find a normal knee. And then this, the pre slip passes and it starts slipping. And then the, he comes back with knee pain. And then you do another x ray of the knee without examining the hip. It's very important in any child complaining of knee pain that you examine the hip for complete range of motion. Uh, <clears throat> duration of symptoms is important. Uh, we have uh, a pathognomonic sign, it's the Dreman sign where you get obligatory external rotation while flexing the hip. Of course, you lose motion, you lose uh, external rotation, uh, loss of hip internal uh, rotation, abduction and flexion. Uh, the foot is externally rotated and you get atrophy of the thigh muscles. You need to do uh, x-rays in the AP and proglateral. Proglateral is better than AP in early cases for the diagnosis. In the CT, it uh, detects the, uh, the diagnosis very well and, and uh, helps plan the, the entry point of the uh, screws. And the MRI is used to diagnose the pre-slip condition. If you suspect the pre-slip, and then you go for fixation, prophylactic fixation. And it also detects AVN if you are contemplating uh, open uh, reduction of this uh, disease, modified done procedure. Our Klein line in the AP view, it's a line <clears throat> parallel to the upper lateral part of the neck of the humerus. It needs to intersect the epiphysis, a part of the epiphysis. If it's tangential, then this is a, a slippage of uh, uh, the physis in the AP view. And if you do a lateral view, it will be obvious. Uh, Metaphysial blanche sign of steel. Uh, here you can see two things. Uh, first, uh, the, the, the white shadow in the metaphysis, this is due to retroversion uh, of the head and overlap between the physis and the neck. And that's why it's, it's more dense. Those two bones overlap. And you can see that the physis itself is thinner than the other side. And this is another side. Uh, the the, uh, the widened the epiphysis is uh, you get um, a resorption of bone around the epiphysis and you get a decreased height of the physis. Uh, in your differential diagnosis, you have to consider the precious disease, the, the, the painful conditions of the hip, the septic uh, arthritis, the osteomyelitis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, tuberculosis, and congenital dislocation of the hip neglected. <clears throat> Uh, in comparison between uh, the person disease and the slip, we find the, the, the age of occurrence is much higher in the uh, uh, slip capital femoral epiphysis, but it may occur in a younger age in patients with renal osteodystrophy or hypothyroidism or uh, uh, metabolic disease. Uh, they, in, in, uh, the child with slip capital femoral epiphysis is usually tall and thin or obese and adolescent. 
and uh, you don't get loss uh, uh, flexion contraction of the hip, you only get an impersis and uh, it, it presents with pain and then uh, limbing develops later. Uh, the goal of treatment here is to arrest the sleep progression, restore normal proximal femoral anatomy without increasing the risk of apnea. The methods of treatment, we have the percutaneous in cytofixation. We have the surgical dislocation of the hip uh, for open capital realignment and fixation in the five dump procedure, and the osteochondroplasty and combined with the proximal femoral osteotomy, uh, a safer option uh, to replace uh, the modified dump for the people are not having the experience of the centers, not having vast experience in uh, pediatric hip surgery. And then our algorithm, uh, we have uh, the, the stable and unstable types. We have the stable, either mild or moderate or severe. The mild, you have impingement or not. If you don't have the impingement, you go to in situ fixation. If you got impingement, you do in situ fixation as to chondroplasty. Uh, if unstable, you could do uh, a reduction and fixation, or you could do a modified done for open reduction, uh, according to the experience you have. Uh, the moderate or severe, more than 30 degrees, uh, with open physis, you could try to reduce it, or you could uh, uh, go to the other option of the closed physis. You could do uh, intertrochanteric osteotomy and osteochondroplasty for uh, safer uh, application because there is high risk of uh, AVN in a modified dump procedure. The percutaneous uh, screw fixation is for stable and unstable types. Uh, it's used for uh, physiodesis. It may be uh, gross sparing if in young. Uh, one versus two, put one. Uh, two is not essential. Uh, is not essential, but you could do it in large size uh, children. Uh, and uh, capsulotomy is not really always needed. The screw insertion has to be perpendicular to the physis. Uh, the screw starts on the anterior surface of the proximal femur, but not medial to the intertrochanteric line. It will, will cause impingement. Uh, oblique to the physis in severe slips because you are not going from a point perpendicular to the center. Advance until it passes five threads across the physis. Uh, the screw should be at least five millimeters uh, from the subchondral bone in all views. Contralateral hip prophylactic fixation. This is controversial because uh, some did it regularly and they found a high rate of AVN in these cases. We do it when we do it. We do it because in, in slips in young patients, syndromic uh, patients with uh, renal osteodystrophy, hypopituitarism, uh, uh, receiving gross hormone treatment or things like that, uh, uh, presenting at eight years, seven years, uh, and uh, in, uh, in uh, obese, uh, very obese uh, males, and is uh, with uh, non-compliant parents. And uh, you will discover during the discussion the level of education of the patient, and you find the patient is not uh, understanding well uh, or able to communicate with you, you could progress to uh, bilateral fixation. We have several complications to this disease. We have the osteonecrosis of the femoral head and the contralateral hip, uh, state capital femoral events, the most common complication after unilateral surgical fixation. Chondrolysis uh, with persistent uh, penetration residual proximal femoral deformity and limb length discrepancy due to physial arrest. And that could be treated with a, a corrective uh, subtrochanteric osteotomy. <clears throat> you could get little fixation and slip progression. Uh, you could uh, do lead diagnosis and uh, you find the head in uh, severe slip and it, this is a very difficult situation. Of course, infection is deleterious in the hips <clears throat> Sometimes they get chronic pain due to uh, part of the uh, femoral neck articulating with the shaft of the femur and hitting against, impinging against the labrum. Uh, eventually, this part will lead to degenerative osteoarthritis. Pin associated proximal femoral fracture if you uh, do hammering uh, of the femoral shaft and uh, 
several entry uh, uh, times and the child is obese, it may be a weak point and child falls or slips, uh, it will get a subtrochanteric fracture. Uh, even though you could get it with removal, difficult removals. If you, uh, please, if you do uh, put uh, uh, partially threaded screws, you need to remove them as early as you can. Because if the child grew and ossified, it will be very difficult to remove this screw unless you put it a fully threaded screw. Uh, of course, labral tearing and degeneration is another complication of uh, osteonecrosis. Our take home message is uh, it's not slipping of the head, it is uh, the head is in place and the, the shaft uh, translates. It has clinical uh, stability, it does not correlate with intraoperative stability. Single screw inside of is the best treatment. Urgent gentle reduction and decompression and internal fixation for unstable slip capillary lifts. Thank you.